Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Trust you guys are doing well. Hey, kind of a different video that I have lined up here for you guys. Something to kind of break it up from all the different office explainer videos that we've been putting out lately. Not a lot of work here going on back at home because it's just been raining every single day. But here's what I got for you guys today. It is a fun clip that was from Launchpreneur Academy Live 2019, which was our huge live event back in November. It was a really, really good time. So here's the deal, I actually have a clip that I wanna share with you guys from Mark Parker. Mark Parker is one of the safety field coordinators, technical safety coordinators. He's, he's the guy in charge for safety, okay? And he actually comes to my business, your guys' business. Um, he's here to help facilitate making sure that we're safe and are using our PPE out in the field. Now, I know safety and training, you know, doesn't get talked a lot about, you know, on YouTube from a lot of influencers and YouTubers, if you will. I am a huge PPE nut, an advocate, and so at our event, uh, I didn't tell anybody that Mark was coming in, but Mark volunteered his time to come in on a Saturday and do this presentation that I recorded that I wanted to share with you guys. So that being said, if you guys appreciate Mark, shoot the video a big thumbs up. Hopefully this video helps you guys out, and maybe you can just veg out, kind of you know hang out on the couch for 20 minutes, watch his presentation, because it was really, really good. Um, I will be honest with you, there's a couple like, not gory scenes or anything like that, but there's a couple scenes and presentation slides that he gave where there is some pretty graphic images. So uh, if you're if you're kind of uh, you know easy stomach like that, kind of like some of uh, like my wife is, you might not want to watch those parts. But uh, Mark did an amazing job. So that being said, he's going to get into it. He's going to share with you guys for about 20, 25 minutes about how to be safe out there as we go back into the upcoming season. And by the way, um, I'm actually hoping to get Mark in studio. He's going to be on the podcast. Hopefully we can do a presentation. So if there's some things that you guys want to ask Mark or just some questions or comments, leave them down below. I know he'd love to see that. But again, do me a big favor, shoot the video a thumbs up. Mark volunteered his time on a Saturday. I wanted to make sure that we can show him some love and just say thank you for him to volunteer his time to give back to the lawn care community. So um, one thing I'll say on this clip is that the first third, we have really good video, really good audio. The last two thirds, we had to use a backup camera and audio source because Mike, uh, uh, Mark left the microphone because he was walking around with the chainsaws and all the PPE gear. So the audio is a little bit quieter in the second uh, half of the presentation, but it all turned out really, really well. So anyway, that's it guys, short and sweet one today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch up with you guys inside the video. Good job. Give Rich one more round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> In fact, we were back there and I'm like, hey Rich, can you talk about this instead? He goes, that's not what I prepared for. I go, help me out. He goes, I got you. So thank you, Rich. <laughs> little audible there. All right, um, this was not originally uh, on any schedule that I had sent out because I wanted to kind of keep this, not like a secret, but just a, a little bit extra, a little bit above and beyond. I'm a big um, under promise, over deliver kind of guy. And uh, we got uh, Mark Parker over here. He's with Steel, uh, really quick. <laughs> Sorry, I'll go. But uh, Mark is a, um, uh, what would you say, a technical training safety coordinator? technical field specialist. So he is the guy that uh, teaches you how to be safe with all of your equipment so you get to go home and see your family at night. Who likes the sound of that? Um, I, there's, you know, you guys see on my channel a lot, I advocate PPE because I'm a big believer in like just the basics, guys. Good shoes, good boots, safety glasses and headphones, right? Uh, hearing protection. And you can't be, uh, you can never have too much safety, I guess is what I'm trying to say when you're out there. So we're not gonna go long because I know you guys' tummy, uh, tummies are probably rumbling like mine, um, but I'm gonna give uh, Mark the time of day, about a 20 minute window here to help just teach you guys about safety. You know, I know it's not talked about a lot uh, in our industry from like a lot of stages or videos because it's kind of a dry topic, but Mark and I, we got uh, lunch earlier this summer and uh, he's like, dude, I'd love to serve the community. This is what I do for a living and, and help people be safe out there so they can go home and see their, their wife and kids at the end of the night. I said, Mark, if you don't mind sharing, I'd love to have you in. So if you guys can do me, he's not getting paid at all. He is on his own time on a Saturday. Get on your feet and help me welcome up Mark Parker and he's gonna teach you guys about safety. Let's go, woo! Welcome, brother. There you go, take it away. Good morning, everybody. So. Let's hear it for Brian one time. Let's hear it for Brian for putting all the Brian and Liz, Brian and Liz, let's hear it for him. So my name is Mark Parker. I am the technical field specialist for Brian Equipment. We are the distributor of steel product across Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, uh, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Western Tennessee. So what I do is I go around and I do safety trainings and stuff like this. So there we go. If we take a look at these statistics for most dangerous jobs in the world, um, 
here is the thing. We fit into, in this entire room, we don't fit into one specific category here. We'll fit into a few different ones. I'd say logging workers, uh, farm and ranchers, you have miscellaneous agricultural workers, construction laborers, things like that. You can see that uh, what we're doing, um, there's danger involved in all of it. The, um, we are cutting things, we are moving things, heavy things, small things. Whatever we're doing, there's danger involved, so that is why safety needs to be on the forefront. So specifically with um, chainsaws and cutting and wood and things like that, but also in a broad sense, um, you guys should probably try to implement this within your companies. But specifically for, say we're gonna be cutting down a tree today or something like that, you wanna have a job site safety meeting before you get started, before you even think about starting a saw, before you even think about doing anything like that. I would advise you guys, designate somebody to call for help. And then, designate a backup person to call for help in case the uh, person who you designate to call for help is injured. <clears throat> Figure out if anybody knows CPR. If they do know CPR, make sure they understand that. Make sure they are prepared to administer CPR if it is necessary. Another one, fire extinguishers. Um, maybe you guys have them in your trucks, maybe you don't. This is a super important thing to keep um, within your uh, truck, trailer, something of that sort. And also, point it out to the crew that's working. Make sure they understand where it is. This is how you get forest fires. This is how um, some major damage can happen because a fire is ignited and we don't know where to uh, put it out at. First aid kits. I know from firsthand experience, I'm a landscaper. I was a landscaper just like you guys. I had a company and I was a manager. I know from firsthand experience having to use this. Um, I was pruning and I cut my hand one time and it was bleeding and I uh, was knew where the safety kit was behind the driver's seat so I was able to get some wipes and clean my finger out and I was able to go back to work. But it's important to know where the first aid kit is because those seconds, uh, Searching for a safety kit could mean the difference between life and death when you have a serious injury. Here's a little one, allergies. Is anybody allergic to bees? Is anybody allergic to anything else like that? Do you have an EpiPen? Where is your EpiPen? Is it in your uh, lunchbox? Which lunchbox is yours? There's six sitting right here. How about we set this one up on a C or designate it so we understand where this uh, EpiPen is in case of an emergency and we need to give you the old stab into the thigh with an EpiPen so your throat doesn't swell up. And then one that people don't really think of um, is the last vehicle. So say we're on a job site right here. Here's the area that we're going to be cutting in. There's the entrance and exit of the job site. Which direction do you guys think the truck should be oriented? Should the front of the truck be facing the job site or should be facing towards the road? What's that? Road, correct. You want to be facing towards the road. Why? Because if I lay a saw into my leg, I want you guys to throw me in the back of the truck and get out of here as fast as we can so we can get to a hospital. If you do not, and we have to make that seven, eight point turn, we've all seen people do it, um, then that could mean the difference between life and death in an emergency situation. So we're gonna go over some PPE um, right here and kind of walk through. So if we take a look at this chart right here, most of the injuries that occur to your body when you are operating a chainsaw occur to your left hand and your left leg. Why do people think this is? Well, all chain and hardly ever any are occurring to your right hand. Why is this? All chainsaws are made to be operated right-handed. Your right hand should be on the trigger in the back. And if you take a look, that is what this plate on the bottom of the saw is for, where near the trigger. That is in case the chain or bar fly off because um, the bar nuts got loose and it flies off and that is made to protect your hand. So if your right hand's on the trigger and your left hand's off, uh, I'm gonna have to do one of these. Okay. Mm. All right, can you guys hear me? Cool. So 
I've got my right hand on the trigger right here, and I have my left hand right here. Sometimes uh, there's two scenarios where most of the injuries to your left hand is occurring. Somebody is using a top handle chainsaw and is holding the branch or something like that, and they take their hand off and then they go to cut, and they cut their hand. Or another common one is they don't put the chain break on correctly. They will, so say the chain breaks off, they will go to slap it forward rather than rolling their wrist forward, and they'll miss and hit the saw. That happens quite a bit. Now you see your left leg. People might be wondering, why is your left leg the one that's getting hurt more than your right leg? The reason being is because when you're standing, you're standing like this with the chainsaw and drop start. How many people have you seen take a chainsaw and drop start it just like that? All, all the time, people are doing that. That is not how you start a chainsaw whatsoever. There are three different ways you start a chainsaw safely. One is in between your legs. Three points of contact, you pull the cord over. Another one, you put your boot into where the handle is, three points of contact, pull it over. The other one, if you're a bigger guy, kind of like myself, and your boot won't fit in, and you can go this way, you can put your knee on top of the saw, put three points of contact, and you can pull it over. You should never, ever, ever drop start a chainsaw. Why? Because that chain is running right when that uh, chainsaw is starting. So if you start the saw without the brake on, I drop start it. Oh, there goes my kneecap. It just tore it right off of my leg. That is the issue when you are uh, starting chainsaws in the property. That is how you get hurt in your left leg. That is how you get hurt in multiple ways. Helmets. Incredibly important to be wearing a helmet. You can see almost 10% of injuries occur when you uh, occur to the head. How long do people think helmets are good for? Five years. It's five years. It's five years. Helmets are good for five years. Then you have to replace them. Or until they are compromised beforehand. So, the way you can test and check a helmet, there's a born on date inside every helmet. It will show the month of the year that it was manufactured. Anytime you pick up a helmet, you want to squeeze and check for pitting, cracking, whitening of the plastic inside there. You also want to check the suspension of the helmet. How do I do this? Give it a couple punches. Check it. If your hand doesn't touch the top of the helmet, and it works with the suspension, then you're good to go. I was doing a training at a uh, Metro Park service a couple weeks ago, and there was probably about uh, 25 people in the training. And I'm going over the helmet part, and guy tosses me his helmet, goes, hey, check this. Tosses it up. I crush this thing, it splits right in half in my hand. Toss it off to the side. Another guy tosses me his helmet. I crush this one too. I literally go down the line of all 24 people and I crush 8 of the 24 helmets. The look on the supervisor's face when he walked back into the room was priceless and he saw a pile of broken helmets. He comes up and he's like, why'd you break all the helmets? And I go, because they weren't good, so you're welcome. They went and bought about 10 more helmets. So, it's important to check your helmets, keep them in a cool, uh, dark place, don't store them on like the hood of your truck or the dash of your truck because what happens is the UV rays break down the plastics and uh, they compromise the integrity of the helmet. You also have, uh, don't put stickers on your helmet either because the, the stickers, the glue in the stickers will break down the polymers in the helmet and can soften and weaken the helmet. Couple stories here. Uh, this gentleman had a learning moment and thought it was worthy of sharing. He got hit in the head by a tree at a nature preserve. He was cutting down a 20 foot tall, 10 inch in diameter, dead standing snag in preparation for a scheduled burn. There were two small dead standing cherry trees around 4 foot tall uh, in the felling direction of the tree. In a domino effect, he cut one tree down and both other trees fell down and they hit him in the head. He had a spotter, but it happened so fast, there was nothing he could do. 
His helmet was shattered and uh, he had a minor concussion. This is what his helmet looked like. That could have been his head, but he was wearing a helmet. He was being safe. He was, it, accidents happen. It's important to wear a helmet. Here's another one. They're sending a picture of uh, what could have been this gentleman's head. He was using a uh, steel uh, 031 chainsaw. Uh, in 28 years of use, they had never had this close to possible uh, serious or fatal injury. This helmet most likely saved this gentleman's life. Um, he had no idea until he saw his helmet flying 30 feet away uh, what had happened. And he always wondered if wearing a helmet 100% of the time was necessary or not. He never saw the bar, the 18 inch bar, leave the log that he was cutting. A close look at his helmet, you'll see there are some chunks missing out of his helmet. Right here. So what had happened was that saw, he was cutting, and it kicked back, and it caught his helmet and threw it. Even though that inertia brake, you can see the inertia brake worked, and the saw worked, but it still hit him. He still can get hurt. The chain on a chainsaw is going at about 65 miles per hour when uh, the saw is at full speed. So, if you think you can get out of the way of a kickback chainsaw, let's do a little test. We'll take a bar, about 18 inch bar, put a piece of tape on the ground. And then you can be blindfolded, and I'll take my truck and drive it at you at 65 miles per hour. <laughs> I'm going to honk my horn when I hit that 18 inch line and you can move out of the way. Think you could? No. This isn't Marvel, this isn't the comics. You're not in the flash. Earring protection. This is something I've seen Brian touch on a lot in his videos. This is the number one occupational injury in the United States because people so often do not wear hearing protection. I don't know why. It is very easy to wear. The over-the-ear earmuffs are the ones I'm a fan of because uh, they protect the back of your ear from noise fatigue and things like that. Um, also, I see a lot of people using Bluetooth headphones. I use them when I cut the grass. It's important, whenever you're operating a chainsaw, never put artificial noise into your ear. Don't use, listen to music while you're operating a chainsaw. Why? Because you can't hear somebody yell for help. You can still hear somebody yell for help over top of the saw um, if you're cutting wood. But then if I have music playing in the background, you can't hear their voice cut through the chainsaw like that. So keep in mind, don't be using music while you're cutting wood. It's okay if you're cutting grass things like that, hedge trimming, um, those things are fine, but don't use it uh, when you are cutting wood. Eye protection, this is another <coughs> one. Most of you guys are wearing safety glasses, but make sure you're wearing proper safety glasses. Make sure you're wearing ANSI certified safety glasses. This is important because ANSI sets, a, they, they're a standards organization, and they set the types of standards that they need to be. Um, you'll see the Z87 Plus on the inside of the temple of your sunglasses, either on the right or left side. Make sure you're getting ANSI Z87 Plus certified safety glasses and not knockoffs because they pass shatter resistant and shatter proof tests. And so if they do not, then you could have uh, safety glasses that turn into shrapnel on your face whenever you have a rock or something fly out. Um, the following incident involved a Montebello Fire Department employee not knowing the actual trajectory of this nail. They believed that the use of goggles saved this man's eyesight. They were at a drill rolling a roof crop where they were rolling uh, rafters when the chainsaw hit a nail that must have only been in the sheathing. He was in full PPE with eye protection when the nail slid by his goggles and was embedded a half inch into the bridge of his nose right between the eyes. They took him to a hospital where he had a CT scan and found the nail was embedded into his nose, fracturing it. Uh, the nail was removed and he was sent home to work the next day. Take a look at that. You can clearly see where his safety glasses were and uh, how they saved this man's life. With his, his <laughs> <laughs> Those are usually the gentle groans I get when I play this. First they're like, oh wow, ouch, that hurts so bad. And they're like, well all right, he's happy to be alive. <laughs> But you can see, if that nail would have went into his eye, he probably would have lost his life. But he was wearing safety glasses. It's important when you're string trimming, when you're hedge trimming, when you're mowing, cutting, doing anything, wear safety glasses. 
Trick question. Does this constitute as eye protection? No, it does not. This is to keep wood chips off of your face or keep like branches from hitting you in the face when you're going through the woods. This is not eye protection. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Chaps, who here owns a chainsaw? All right, keep your hand up if you own a pair of chaps. Keep your hand up if you wear the chaps. <laughs> Very good, I'm impressed. Do a little video. <laughs> So the material inside chaps is called Aberton. It's a derivative of Kevlar. You can see right here where it wrapped right around the sprocket and the chain stopping the chainsaw and uh, thus preventing for, uh, injury that could potentially happen with your leg. Um, it does not ruin or damage your saw. You just take the Avertic back out. It's kind of annoying to do, but I'd rather take Avertic out of a chainsaw than take a chainsaw out of my leg. <laughs> That sounds about right. So, this is showing you how the material uh, spread apart, how it wrapped right around, um, and good things like that. Uh, it's important to keep in mind with uh, chaps, there's a few things. Uh, the actual working part of chaps is the Avertic inside the front and the back of the chaps. It's almost like a book bag material. Um, you can get chaps just the ones, you can get full wrapper on ones like the ones I'm wearing, or you can get uh, chaps, just the apron ones or full pants. Write this down. Wash your chaps new out of the packaging. Why? Because it fluffs up the Avertech and it allows it to actually unwind. Wash your chaps periodically throughout use. If you're getting oil and gas on the chaps, wash them. You don't want to catch it on fire while you're wearing pants. Uh, or chaps. Uh, replace your chaps immediately if they are cut or damaged. If there's any fraying at all to your chaps, make sure you replace them. So here's, and also make sure you're wearing your chaps properly. Make sure they're buckled up and cinched up. You can see, if I lay a saw into my leg right here, it's not going anywhere. If I lay a saw into my leg right here, you're left wide open right there. So that's an important thing to remember the chaps. Foot protection, whenever you're cutting, wear leather steel toe boots. Don't use, don't wear dockers, don't wear flip flops, don't wear dress shoes, don't wear tennis shoes or anything like that. The dad new balances, don't wear those. These are, yeah, these are chainsaw boots. There's the Avertec inside of them. They're excellent for that, but leather steel toe boots will function correctly. Hand and arm injuries, uh, Wear gloves, make sure you're wearing gloves. Keep in mind cognizant, uh, operate a chainsaw with two hands at all times. Uh, you can buy gloves with the Avertic inside of the, their hands or you can just buy regular gloves, but make sure you're always wearing gloves whenever you are uh, operating a saw. Um, I do appreciate you guys taking the time. Be safe out there, please be safe, please be careful. Um, keep in mind any of the dangers that you're working with. If you are in the Michigan, Northern Ohio, Northern Indiana area, come find me. I would be happy to come and talk to your crews, any training like that that you might need. So thank you very much, and I appreciate it.